Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca and I'm from City Libraries and today we're going to be making a kaleidoscope. Now you may have used one of these before, sometimes they come in a form of a toy, but they're actually an awesome science experiment as well. So before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit about what a kaleidoscope is and how it works. So a kaleidoscope is an optical instrument that has two plus um, or two or more reflective surfaces in it that actually reflects the, refracts the light and colour off to create symmetrical patterns. It was invented in 1816 by Sir David Brewster and its name is actually derived from Greek terminology. So the words that kaleidoscope come from mean beautiful or beauty, a form or a shape, and to look at or examine. So effectively, kaleidoscope means a beautiful shape that you examine, which I thought was kind of cool. So before we get started, I'm gonna run through some of the materials you're going to need to create it. So I've got a cardboard tube that you may find at home from lots of different places, from a toilet roll holder, to a paper towel holder, to a cling film holder roll. If you don't have any of those at home in your recycling, you could also make a cardboard tube out of a cardboard box that you might find simply by rolling the cardboard into a tube and fastening it so it creates a tunnel. We're also going to need some black card. Now I do recommend making sure it's black. If you don't have any black at home, you can paint some standard cardboard a black colour. We're going to need some translucent film. If you don't have any film like what I've got today, you could use a clear window out of an envelope or out of a biscuit packet and it will work the same. You're going to need some glass or plastic beads and make sure these are transparent so you can actually see through them. If they're solid opaque block colors, they're not going to work as well. I've also got some cling film here that we're going to be using. You're going to need some sticky tape, some scissors, a ruler is really important, you will need that. You'll need some pencils and maybe a black marker to mark on the transparent film. So the first thing we need to do is to measure the diameter of our cardboard roll with our ruler. Now we need to be very precise with this because it affects some measurements and some strips we need to cut out in the future. So you can possibly see, or maybe not with my upside down ruler, that there's about a two mil difference between the outside diameter and the inside diameter of my, of my cardboard roll. So I need the inside diameter, which is 3.8 centimeters. Now to get our length of our strips that we need, we need to times our inside diameter by 0 0.866. So 3.8 centimeters by 0 0.866 equals 3 point, nope, it equals 2.9 centimeters wide is my magical number. And we're going to use that information to measure out our strips of black and transparent card that we're going to be using. Now I have pre-measured these to make it simple for me to show you all on um, today's episode. So I've measured it at two at 3.3 centimeters, 3.2 maybe. We do need to make it just slightly a fraction smaller so it can fit inside our tube nice and flat and it doesn't end up curved. I've also run a quick line across the bottom of my film to make sure it fits neatly inside my tube so I don't have to cut it off later. So I'm going to quickly cut these out now. Alright, so all of our strips are now cut out in front of us. I would just like to mention that the perfect size piece of card for a cardboard roll this size is about an A5 size. It lets you get the amount of strips you need out of it plus our end caps on either end of the cardboard tube. So once you have all of your pieces cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to stick the black pieces of card on top of our transparent pieces of card. So I'm going to go and do that now.
Now it is okay if there's a little bit of sticky tape overhang because it will help you keep the transparent card on top of the black cardboard. Now I've only stuck three of the sides together because what we're going to do is we're going to fold it into a triangle and slot it in our cardboard tube. So it shouldn't need the third side stuck together but if you are having trouble by all means you can stick it together as well. Now this is the point in time where you notice if your cutting and measuring has been done well, is if it fits inside the tube neatly. Okay, so mine sits inside the tube kind of all right. It is a little bit bent. It's not sitting as straight as I would like it. To fix that, you can go through and just shave a little bit off the edges of our strips of paper, but I'm gonna keep going today because it still will work, just not as well. So now that our cardboard and our transparent paper is inside of our cardboard roll, we're going to cut out a piece of black to stick on the bottom to use as our eyepiece. So what I'm doing is tracing a rough circle around the outside of my tube to give me a cutting line to use to create the eyepiece. So let's cut that piece out now. So you might be wondering how we're going to stick a round tube to a flat piece of paper. Well, I've got a little trick for you. We're gonna make some incisions in north, south, east and west on our black piece of card. And then we're gonna chop a little bit inside it so we can lift up the little tabs to stick to the bottom of our kaleidoscope. Let me show you. So we'll cut south, east, spin it around for north, and then we'll do west, and then we're gonna chop some little ones in between. Now, if we put our black piece of paper back down on the table in front of us, and then set our cardboard roll on top, it makes it a little bit easier to stick the black lens down. So we'll pick up a little tab, grab some sticky tape, and we'll stick that one on. Now we're gonna keep doing this for the rest of the black tabs around the cardboard tube. All right, so our eyepiece is now attached to our cardboard tube. And we need to pop a little hole in the bottom of it so that we can see through it. Now you could use a couple of different things. You could use a really sharp lead pencil, a pen, or even a needle. Today I'm going to use a pen to pop through the bottom. Now spin it around in there to make sure the eyepiece is well made and nice and big for you to see through. Well, it's not really that big, is it? But we need to still be able to peer into it. Our next job we're gonna to have to do is we'll measure out our piece of acrylic card. Now it's easier to do this before you fill it full of beads because um, you could have a little bit of spillage if you do it. So let's measure out our acrylic piece of card. Drawing a rough circle. Now you see my circle is very, very rough. And we'll quickly cut this one out so it's ready to rock and roll when we need it. Don't forget to cut your incisions in north, south, east and west, like we did to our black card. So 
So that one is all prepared, ready for us once we fill our kaleidoscope with beads. The next thing we need is a piece of cling film. Now I've got quite a large piece here to use. I'm gonna chop this down a little bit because it only just needs to sit on top of our kaleidoscope with not very much excess. So I'll quickly cut this. And we're gonna sit it on top of our kaleidoscope. Now this part is probably the trickiest part you're going to come across. We need to make a little indent in the inside of our black triangle that we made previously. Now it's really important that you do this carefully. You don't want it too deep because you'll need too many beads to fill it and it won't work as well. You don't want it too shallow though because then the beads that you need to put in it won't be able to move around and create our beautiful um, form for us to examine. So once you've created an indent and you've got it almost ready, we're then gonna stick the cling film to our cardboard roll. So there's our indent. I'm not sure if you can see that very easily, but there's our indent there and we're gonna stick it down to our roll now. All right, so we have our indent, and now we're gonna tip our beads in. I've got a collection of beads out already for me to tip into my kaleidoscope, but you might need some help putting these into our little indent that we made earlier. So let's tip these in. Being mindful of how many we need to fill the space, but still leave room for movement. I think that will be plenty. We'll throw some beads around the room at the same time and make a mess, because why not? And then we're gonna stick our transparent film on top. Now you might need some help to do this because an extra set of hands is really helpful for this part. So we'll see how we go. A piece of advice I give you is to be mindful of how big you create these slits that we cut in earlier, because this needs to hold all of the beads in. So you don't want any gaps for any of the beads to escape because our beads can be a choking hazard for our little people that we may have running around. So we'll hold on the piece of transparent film and we'll start sticking down our tabs like we did with our black paper. Oh, one of our beads has even escaped down to the side. Now I'm going to do one final quick wrap around the outside to make sure all of our beads aren't going to move in our kaleidoscope. You might find you might need a bit thicker piece of tape, maybe some um, really thick masking tape or something so that this is nicely sealed. And there is your kaleidoscope. So we're gonna take a look inside and see what different patterns, some beautiful patterns we can examine. Let's take a look. So this worked really well. I had green beads in the corner which created a circle inside my kaleidoscope. And then I had some pink and white beads all on the outside creating some beautiful symmetric patterns to look at. Now, if you'd like to make this, you can make it out of recycled materials like I mentioned before, out of our clear plastic from maybe a biscuit container or an envelope, different bits of cardboard you might find around the house but you could actually use different objects inside the kaleidoscope. You could go outside and see if there's different uh, flower petals or leaves that you can see through. Make sure they're nice and small to fit inside the kaleidoscope, or if you've made your own out of a piece of cardboard and you've got one that big, you could put big pieces in your kaleidoscope. It's totally up to you. Now, we do have lots of awesome different things in our library that you can access to make all kinds of things like a kaleidoscope. You can see the books behind me with lots of different activities and science experiments in them. 
We also have some really cool online databases that you can access with your library membership. There's a rainforest coding database where you can practice and learn about computer coding. There's also a database called Busy Things that has 115 different problem solving activities on there and different experiments that you can get cracking in and have some fun. We've also got this awesome collection called Library of Things where you can borrow cool different um, items such as Ozobot robots, musical instruments like ukuleles and pianos, telescopes, sewing machines and all sorts of different things that you can get in and play with and experiment and trial and see what you can create from those as well. Now I hope you had fun in our session today and you really enjoyed it and you made an awesome kaleidoscope to use at home and we can't wait to see you in the library. Bye!